So I do a lot of live streaming. All right, in the live stream, I show my screen. Thanks, Mike Zero. A lot of people go, oh, what does it all do and how does it all work? So I wanted to make a little video to show you how it worked and then I could redirect people to here in the event that they ask that question. So the first thing I do is I run N1MM. N1MM is a logger, but it gives you a load of data as well. So let me cover one thing, the first thing, which is if you want, if you want to enter a contest or you want a new log, you just do file new log in the database and it says what sort of log now i just have dx because it's just general purpose chit chat you know i'm just dxing but you all the sort of big contests in the world are listed here including rsgb ones and arrl ones so any contest you want to enter you can actually t just click it in here fill out a few fields and and you're away and you can you know type a call in f uh, f1 a b c or F12, ABC, I hit space bar, it gives me 59 both ways. And if it was a contest, it would give me automatically my serial number, and then I would just type in his serial number, 123, whatever that is. Out to W, it clears that. Now, because I remote quite a lot of the time, what I like to do is all the toys I have in my shack, I want to be able to remote control them as well. So we have the Antenna Genius, which is my antenna switcher. So we put that, and that just sits here. At the moment, I'm not connected to anything. That would be the Signature 12 on transmit, and that would be the 4080 fan dipole on receive, okay, because I've got a two VFO radio, which we'll come to in a minute. I run something called CamDesk, and what CamDesk does is takes the DVI output on the back through an HDMI capture card and shoves it on my screen. So we'll open that up. And there's my screen, it's a bit small at the moment, but we can right click that, go to preferences and do some changes. I like it a very strange size, 600 by 700, and I unpin it from the desktop. Now CamDesk may not work if you haven't got a nvidia gpu i think it is but anyway we'll just put that there for a minute because i'm going to move that around i don't know where i want it yet and then we i have when i'm remote control well even when i'm not remote control i have the free software from uh kenwood arcp 990 that sits to my top right and i can control all the fit functions of my radio that's a nice thing with kenwood i think um icom and yesu do similar toys but uh, anyway i'm kind of used to how this works even if you might think it looks a mess so i can you know go up and down in frequency and i also have acom director running so uh, my good friend uh, james just lives a couple of miles up the road he must have developed this oh it must have been 13 14 years ago now but if you've got an acom automatic acom and you don't use the latest version, but the one before it, then you can get this to work as well. I don't know if I've made a video about exactly how to make that work, but there we are. So at the moment we're in standby, but we could actually go to operate with that button there. Let's just keep it on standby. All right, it thinks it's on 3.7 to 3.8 megahertz, because I haven't sent a carrier to it yet, and it would automatically tune the Acom 2000. From the window button, we can have the band map, which is there. It's also got the band map for Radio 2 as well, which is an ICOM 9700, which currently, for some reason, is not on. All right. I think I know why, but <laughs> so ignore that for the time being. Uh, we put a few other things up and about. We've got the Super Check Partial. So that's in the middle here. So if Tom calls in, M0R, and I... MY and I put a question mark in there. I'll have to zoom this in for you, but RMY, I think he's is suggesting that's grayed out because we've had him before. And it is. Because he's a contest logger, it's come up with duplicate. Right? He's not he is a duplicate. Yeah. I've had him many times on the AT Media Band. Space bar would fill it all in for me and I could say, you know, day off. Whatever. Uh, a few other things on the window front. 
We've got an entry window, which we're looking at. We've got the gray line, which is quite nice. You can have more than one machine running at once. That's why it's got the network status here. So I can have, I've got a second station at the office. So if Jonathan's working, I'll be able to see what frequency he's on, that sort of thing. Telnet, we have the Telnet. And that's just going to automatically log in for me, uh, which means if we hit the Show DX button, any spots will automatically come up on the cluster. We've got the Info window information. Where's it gone? Info, which I normally put about here, which is why we need to move this around a bit. I can't remember where I have it normally. That cam desk thing, the back of the radio, it's just for fun, really. It's quite handy. I mean, I'm kind of anti waterfalls, <laughs> right? But they're blooming handy if you can see a really big station next door to you. It's splattering, you know. So they're almost done. I put something at the bottom right here. What is it? Oh, I know what it is. We've got um, another entry window. There we go. So that's for eventually when VHF finally works through Vox at the moment. I can't get it because I remote a lot of the time. In fact, I'm remote right now to the station. Therefore, everything I do has to be remotable. And, um, but I can't Vox from here to the icon because Vox doesn't work via the USB port in the back. So I'm going to come out the sound card and go in the mic jack. jack, mic jack. Uh, we'll cover that another day. And the last thing is, how do I get audio remote, by the way? Well, I run another piece of software called Sonopass. Both ends, right? So I connect to that. It's got a password. I connect to the group. And you can see if I run it locally as well. So this is locally now. I'm connecting. You'll be able to hear some stuff. Hang on. Go to 40. So how does it work? We've got then the grey line top left and you can see all these yellow dots are actually where all the spots are. I believe if I click that dot, yeah, it actually changes the band as well. That's taking me to 28 megahertz. If I click that dot there, that's on 40 meters and that's R0ADD, 3A2OD. Oh, that's Monaco. That's a bit rare, isn't it? Obviously, I've explained the um, capture card at the back. I've explained a little bit about the ACOM, and that's fully auto magic. Okay, ACOM director. If you've got the ACOM 2000 or one of the other transistor ACOMs as well. This entry window at the top, I'll get a screenshot what happens, because if I'm spotted, it comes up, you've been spotted, which is a kind of a quite a pleasant, reassuring confidence boost when you've been spotted. I'll find a screenshot and show you that. ARCP has point is me doing a demo of this. If you watch my live streams, you can see what, what I do. But in the in the main, what I do is I change change frequency to whatever I want, and then I hit take the main over to the sub, and I've got receive on and off. I like that stereo sound, which is why I've got the antenna switch here. Most of the time, I'm on the signature 12.4 for transmit and receive. And then I've got the um, um, 40 meter fan dipole. Sometimes I do it the other way around. Sometimes if it's just local during the day, I'll be on the dipole for transmit because I want a low to the ground, big NVI is double, and I'll have the uh, loop on the ground in my right ear. That's quite a pleasant experience as well. We've, we've talked about this. That's going to be for the 9700. This is the cluster coming in, and that's about it. So hopefully that will give you a, an inkling of how it operates. And if you watch just a few minutes of one of my live streams, you'll see how I operate it. But the Super Chat partial is pretty good. That's replicated in Station Master, by the way. A lot of this you can do in Station Master. And I feed Station Master with my data. So if we go to Config 
configure ports, broadcast data. I'm sending my data to these ports and Station Master has got that. So if you're on Station Master, you will see right now I'm on 7133, which is pretty cool. It'll do a lot more, right? The manual is only four inches thick <laughs> for N1MM. I absolutely adore it because you don't need a fat machine. You don't need the internet. It'll just run on a cheap old laptop as well. So what's to come in the future? Well, we've got we've got the Foursquare controller to lever into here as well. And then um, I've got, I need a six way um, switch. So I know I've got an eight way switch for the genius here, bottom, middle, right. I need a six way one or another one of these for the top of the tower to switch the quad. But we've got a Rat Pack and EA4TX does a nice little remote control software USB thing that will do that for me. Just a little bit of rambling tonight. Hopefully it's just inspired you. All right, there we are. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Have a jolly good day. Enjoy your radio. All right, bye for now.